We're continuing the series of finding purpose in life. And in essence, we are still looking at Nehemiah. Nehemiah is giving us a lot of insight on how we are to be working for the Lord and how the work of the Lord uh, does face some of the obstacles that comes into our lives. So I encourage you to continue realizing God has purpose for you. Let me ask you a question, or better yet, let me just make a statement. Did you realize, did you know that in a matter of about an hour, the world's problems are solved on TV? Am I right? How many of you watch TV shows? Raise your hand. I know every one of you do. We watch TV shows and then the whole matter of one full hour, it doesn't matter what is happening. It tends to be solved in those 60 minutes. For example, you watch some of the programs and uh, we see how there are rescues from massive earthquakes in an hour. One hour. Massive earthquake all over uh, the West Coast is, is rapidly solved in a matter of an hour. Our lives are saved in a matter of an hour. Well, we know it's not really in a matter of an hour, but that's what TV portrays to us. We also see the area of, of uh, on TV, uh, the, the destruction from a nuclear bomb, how that is thwarted or stopped in a matter of an hour we're able to solve that problem and the problem no longer exists. Or we can talk about how uh, on TV we see how our, our planet is being saved from the alien attack. People listen to me. I'm not worried about the alien attack you know, from outer space. I'm worried about the attack inside. And when we look at the reality of all this, everything can be solved and summed up in a matter of an hour. And you're like, yay, we won. But in the real world, in our world, in your world, it's not that simple. At times it seems we are never going to accomplish the task before us. You ever felt that way? You ever felt that, man, I'll never get this done. I just, you know, just more and more and constant. It just never ends. Forget about the hour. Sometimes we're working on this for decades. And it just never ends. You seem, it just seems like you fix one hole in the water dam and what happens? Another one happens. You plug that one. Another one happens. And you keep plugging the holes and you're like, what's the point? What's the use? Just go ahead and let the dam break and you know there'll be no problems no more. And we look at the constant uh, battle and struggle in life and we somehow realize it's got to be better. Will we ever get finished working? The title of the message is Finding Purpose in Life, Never Ending. The purpose that we are to find is a never-ending responsibility that we have. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you think God has stopped working? Now, there are people who say, well, God's not working because of all this sickness that is going on. People, let me say something to you. God works greater in, in spite of what we think over the sickness, because God is trying to turn people around and get them back to where they ought to be. That's where we are in the case of Nehemiah, looking at the individual and what was happening there. So if God is still working, then why do we want to stop? I don't want to stop working for the Lord. If anything, what's happening should cause us to want to work more. We're seeing a reversal in the Bible Belt. We're seeing that churches are declining, but yet out in the West, churches are increasing. Now, why is that? It's because they're hungering out there. They're working to, to bring the message of Jesus Christ. And we have somehow become complacent and we're allowing things to be in our life. And we need to realize that God is wanting us to be a part of the purpose that God has for us. 
And so we don't need to stop. The devil loses. I have read, I have read in the Bible, you have heard that the devil loses. And so we are to fight the battle, not as if we're going to lose, but we are to fight the battle as if we've already won because we have won through Jesus Christ. And so when you look at God, you realize that God's purpose for your life never ends. That's what you need to know right now. You need to know that God has a purpose for your life and your purpose will never end. The purpose that God has for you doesn't end. It is an ongoing purpose. And we look at Nehemiah chapter 13. And uh, beginning with verse 6, we're going to pick up here. This is the last chapter in Nehemiah. A matter of fact, this is an opportunity for you to go back and read some of the things that happened there in the days of Nehemiah. But beginning with verse 6, Nehemiah is coming onto the scene again. And uh, we, we read through verse 11, then we're going to go to 14 and 18. He says this, But in all the time was not I at Jerusalem. Now you need to understand, Nehemiah had already made a promise to the king, and he goes back to the king, and he's there with the king for a period of time. He had already set things in order. We're going to see that in just a moment. But he goes back, and now he's coming back to Jerusalem to find out what's going on, to see if things are working right. And as he does that, it begins to say, But in all this time was not I at Jerusalem. For in the two and thirtieth year of Artaxerxes, king of Babylon, came I unto the king, and after certain days obtained a leave of the king. And I came to Jerusalem and understood of the evil that Eliashib did for Tobiah in preparing him a chamber in the courts of the house of God. And it grieved me sore, therefore I cast forth all the household stuff of Tobiah out of the chamber. Then I commanded, and they cleansed the chamber, and thither brought I again the vessel of the house of God with meat offering and the frankincense. And I perceived that the portion of the Levites had not been given them, for the Levites and the singers that did work were fed every one to his field. Then contended I with the, the rulers and said, Why is this house of God forsaken? And I gathered them together and set them in their place. Now go down to verse 14. And he, he calls out to God. He says in verse 14, Remember me, O my God, concerning this, and wipe not out my good deeds that I have done for the house of my God and for the offices thereof. In those days saw I in Judah some treading wine presses on the Sabbath and bringing in the sheaves and, and, and lading asses and also wine and grapes and figs and all manner of burdens which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. And I testifieth against them in the day wherein they sold victuals. Uh, there dwelt men of Tyre also therein, which brought fish and all manner of uh, ware and sold on the Sabbath unto the children of Judah and Jerusalem. Then I contended with the nobles of, Ju of Judah and said unto him, What evil thing is this that you have done and profaned the Sabbath day? And then he says in verse 18, Did not your fathers thus and did not our God bring all this evil upon us and upon this city? Yet you bring more wrath upon Israel by profaning the Sabbath. Now, what we see here is a situation in the life of a Nehemiah, where Nehemiah comes back into the scene. And what we need to realize is the, the work for God is an ongoing task. We are to reach out to people who need to know Jesus Christ. We are to help lead them to Jesus Christ as their Savior. And as that is done, we don't stop sharing the message of Jesus Christ. You are sharing the message of Jesus Christ whether you realize it or not. You're either sharing for Christ or you're sharing against Christ. You're either pointing people to Jesus Christ or people are looking at you and they are staying away from Jesus Christ and the church. But let's talk about this, this um, the case of Nehemiah because I think it's a good point that we make and we bring out at this time is Nehemiah we realize that he had finished one of the tasks that he set out to do you remember in the beginning of Nehemiah how he said well what I need to do God has uh, called me to go back to Jerusalem go back to my homeland and go back to help build the wall and the city so let's look at it we need to realize that finishing one task does not end your task. 
You need to know, you need to understand that finishing the one task, whatever God has placed upon your heart, to finishing the one task doesn't end your task. Just because you complete one thing, there is still work to be done. That's the thing. Now let me ask you something. Housework. When will housework ever be finished? Never. It is an ongoing thing that constantly has to be done day in, day out. It will continue to happen. And if you don't do it, yeah, nobody else will do it. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And all this begins to happen where we realize that finishing one task doesn't end your task. They are constantly there. So let's look at, uh, uh, yeah, as we're, we're looking here, we see, in, and if you go back in your Bible, you're going to find out in chapter 7 of Nehemiah, chapter 7, that, that, that there was an accomplishment that took place. Nehemiah was set out by God to finish the building of the wall for protection to finish the gates. Well, if you go back to chapter seven, you will actually see the two things. We'll find out that the wall is done. Check it off. All right, I have the task that God has given me. What God has called me to do is, is to finish the wall. Okay, the wall's done, so I can check that. So the wall is done. And also in chapter seven, we find out that was established there was that, that the, uh, the gate is done as well. The, the gate is completed, it's finished, and so we can check that off his list. And what Nehemiah could do at this time, he says, oh God, I've done everything that you want me to do, so I don't have to do anything else for you. Well, Nehemiah wasn't that type of person. Nehemiah was filled with the presence and the power of God and we realized that not only was the wall done, not only was the gate done, but Nehemiah took it in the area of giving the message of God and appointing individuals, that is he instructed the people what needed to be done. So he instructions are given to the people. He gives instructions. You see, this is what needs to be done. He set people in place and he placed them there that were uh, called of God. They were people who loved God, but yet he, he places them there and then he takes leave. His job's done. But what we fail to realize, and as Nehemiah realized, the job is never done. If you care about God, if you're living for God, you will always want to work for him. You remember what Paul uh, established and he says, I have fought the good fight, I have finished. He's looking back over his life. He's saying, man, I have fought, I have fought, I have fought, I have fought. Now he's not fighting against God. Who's he fighting against? He's fighting against the devil. And people, let, let me tell you this, the church has got to start fighting against the devil and the people in the church have got to start fighting against the devil. If we don't start fighting and if we stop fighting, we, we surrender to evil. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to surrender to the evil that's happening around us. Neither did Nehemiah. He realized the wall was done. He realized that the gates were done. He realized that he had placed individuals there, but we need to know that Christians, you and I, Christians don't live by a checklist. Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is we need to realize is that you and I, we, we, we don't come to the point of saying, I finished that job, now I can sit down, I can sit idle while the work, other work needs to be done. If we're sitting idle, then we're fulfilling what the devil wants us to do. The devil wants us to sit back and do that, do nothing. And it is that type of mentality that some individuals come to the point of saying, well, I'm old, it's time for me to retire, it's time for somebody else to take on the responsibility, it's time for somebody else to do the job that I'm doing. People listen to me. You are to work to the day that God calls you home. It doesn't stop. Well, I'm old, I'm in pain. That's all right. Let me ask you something. Was Jesus Christ in pain on the cross of Calvary? You see, we don't just say, okay, 
I, I, I did it today. You know, I read my Bible today. I don't have to read it no more. Well, what about tomorrow and the next day? Well, I forgot. You know, what I'm trying to say is that we Christians are not to live by a checklist. We are to be constantly doing what God would have us to do every moment of every day. And we need to realize that. Uh, finally, in here, the area of finishing one's task doesn't end our task. Uh, we need to realize that God's work and God's work for us never ends. Day after day after day, work needs to be done. There are many who have, because of this sickness, who have died without Jesus Christ. Does that bother you? Let's assume that half of those who have died, died without Jesus Christ as their Savior. Does that bother you? Let's assume one person died from COVID-19 without Jesus Christ. Does that alarm you? You see, we, we somehow, we, we place it distant from us and we feel that we have accomplished the work that we need to do. We're finished so we can sit back and, and we don't have to do anything else. People, I, I'm here to tell you, we need to roll up our sleeves. We need to start getting our hands dirty in the area of doing what God has called us to do because God's still working and God's work is wanting to be done or God is wanting to use us in the constant battle against evil. Evil is present. Turn on the news. You see it constantly all around us. And yet, what are we doing for Christ? Well, let's look at Nehemiah's unfinished business because I've already said that the wall was done, the gate was done. Nehemiah's back in, in Babylon. We see that happening that, uh, and there in verse, uh, verse 6. It talks about that he is back there uh, with uh, Artaxerxes, the king of Babylon. And so he approaches the king and he says, you know, king, I need to go back. I'm kind of hearing things. Or I just, I want to go back to see what's happening. Paul did this often in the area of the mission mission journeys, him and Barnabas, they would go back to the, the churches that they had founded and find out how things are going and they would help to set in order the things that still needed to be corrected. Well, Nehemiah goes back and he begins to hear some of the things that are happening. Now, what he, he does as he goes back, we realize that, and, and let me say this, in light of Nehemiah's work being finished, you need to realize this fundamental truth. Working on the outside, working to build the walls, working to put up the gates, does not finish the work that needs to be done on the inside. You see, you can have the outside looking good, but the inside looks bad. Isn't that what Jesus said to the religious people there in his days? He says, you're white and sepulchers. You look good on the outside, but inside you just dead bones. And Nehemiah had finished the outside work by the help of all the people in the town who worked and labored to do this, but yet there was still work to be done on the hearts and the minds of individuals. And some of the religious people were just as corrupt and they needed a transformation of heart. So... <laughs> so we, we, we need to see that there is work to be done. Now, in, ch in, in chapter 13, verse 7, we see that he comes into town and he sees the evil. He says, but all this time I'm there and I came unto the king and I get this. And there in, in, in verse 7, we see, and I came to Jerusalem and understood the evil that Eliashib did for Tobiah. Now, that doesn't sound bad. This guy needed a place to stay. Well, now wait a minute. There is a reason. That's why you read the Bible in its entirety. You will begin to see that what he saw was something that God said, do not allow. Did God say, don't let this man come into this place of the temple? Well, did he? Let's go back up. You begin to see. 
He, uh, go back up to verse 2. Because they met not the children of Israel. This is talking about the Ammonites. Verse 1. It's talking about how, how these individuals. That the Ammonites and the Moabites should not come in the congregation of God for ever. Get that? Why? Because they had done evil in the presence of God. And what happens is, verse 2 says that because they met not the children of Israel with bread and with water. The least that we can do is give bread and water. And they refuse to give bread and water. And they bring in an individual, it says here, and they hired Balaam against them that he should curse them. How be it, our God turned the curse into a blessing. Now what happens is, it, it just so happens that Tobiah is a... Anybody know what he was? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. If you go back, you begin to see... That what he was, he was an individual in chapter 2, verse 10, we see there of Nehemiah, it, it establishes this type of person he was. In, in uh, 2.10, uh, verse, uh, verse 10 says, When Sanballat the Hornite, and Tobiah the servant, the Ammonite, got it? He is not supposed to be in the presence, in the place, in the temple of God. He is profaning the temple of God. By the way, when he comes into the temple of God, that means that some of the things that God wanted in the temple and the house of the Lord were put out. And what we see is uh, Nehemiah comes into town and he says, there's work to be done, there's evil going on, and I'm not going to tolerate it. I'm going to speak up and I'm going to uh, 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 speak against the evil. And we find that secondly, that he responded to the wrong that is going on. That is in there in, in verse 8. It says, and, and it grieved me sore. That, in other words, he is, he is upset again of what's going on. He is an emotional individual who allows his emotions to be in check with God's way, not his way, because God's way was already written, already foretold that this person, this Ammonite, was not to be in the place that he was. Now, there is talk and, and there is uh, that, that he was actually related to, Baya was related to Eliashib and all this begins to happen. You know, isn't that how we do it? We, we, we choose the ones who is right, related to us or our friends and we put them in places of position, we put them in the offices and they're not... They're not the ones that ought to be there. So what happens is Nehemiah responds to the wrong. Now what does he do? And it grieved me sore. Therefore, I cast forth all the household stuff of Tobiah out of the chamber. Can you see this? This is a house cleansing. This is where uh, Nehemiah sees what's going on and he says, you know, I'm going to take initiative and I'm going to get rid of, I'm not going to allow it to be there no more. Tobiah, you want a place to sleep? Go out there on the street. And he begins to, to, to bring back the glory of God. And, and when I was reading this, I was thinking about within our own lives, remember the walls on the outside and the gates may be pretty and it may look good, but yet there's work yet to be done in our own lives. And I, I challenge us to realize that many individuals within churches today, they have things on their cell phone, they have apps on their cell phone that they need to somehow clean out. Amen. You don't want to hear that? Well, I had to deal with it this, this past week. There's an app on my phone that would give me good information about good things in the world, but yet every uh, occasionally some bad things would pop up. You ever have an app do that? Yes, you have. And it just burdened me, it bothered me that here was some good insight, good information that was beneficial to all individuals, but yet when you would go and begin to read about it, here comes all this bad garbage that ought not to be uh, so readily available and easily available to any individual, and it's there. You know what I did? God convicted me, and I want you to tell you what I did. I went on and I got to that area and I, I hit this little button that says, mark as spam. Should I, shouldn't I? Should I, shouldn't I? Should I, shouldn't I? 
Good information, you're weighing it out. To do right is better than to do wrong. So I hit, mark as spam. Now I have, well, let me say this. Somehow, even though I marked it as spam, it came up the next day. So what did I do? I didn't open it. I clicked, it said mark as spam. And so far I haven't. What I'm trying to say is what Nehemiah saw was a wrong happening. And he says, we've got to get rid of the wrong. We've got to get back to where God would have us to be. We've got to be the person that God would have us to be. And so there needs to be a house cleansing. And the house cleansing needs to be not in other people's lives, but in our life. In your life. You see, that's where it, it starts in you. And so he's cleansing Jerusalem. The outside is good, but the inside is still evil. And what we find in verse 9 is a challenge. He, it says here in verse 9, it says, Then I commanded. He says, guys, we've got, we've got to. I've started throwing it out. And he says, I, I commanded, and they cleansed the chambers. Purified. Scrubbed. Wiped out. Got rid of the filth, and they take it all out. This is what verse 9 begins to establish. And, and they, they, they brought again the vessels of the house of God with the meat offerings and the frankincense. Now here, people, listen to me. And you can go in the New Testament of Jesus' teaching that just getting rid of the bad is not the job finished. What we have to do is get rid of the bad and place in us the good. Amen? You got to bring into your life, when you get rid of the bad, you got to bring in something to replace it. And the problem we're having in our generation today is people are trying to clean up their lives, but they're not putting anything good in their lives. God wants us to put good in our lives. Jesus made an illustration of that, and we realize how truthful that was. So he challenged the people. Not only does he challenge the people, but then if we go down and we begin to see in verse 14, we see that he acknowledged God. He, he, his whole focus, Nehemiah's whole focus was to bring the nation of Israel back to being a godly nation. Oh, let me ask you this. Wouldn't it be a great thing if America turned and became a godly nation? We are more corrupt and polluted and allowed things to go on for years out of the decency laws and such as it's been passed. And how dare us, we need to get back to God. But Nehemiah says, remember me, oh my God, concerning this, concerning the work. Don't wipe it out. Don't let it fall. Don't let it cease. A good work has been started and it needs to keep going on. Now, we can be cowards, we can sit back and do nothing, but that's not the call. Nehemiah knew that. So he challenged the people, he acknowledged God, we see that, his acknowledgement to God. And not only does he acknowledge God, but he wanted a better world. He wanted a better world. And this wanting a better world, do you want a better world? Well, if you say you do, you know the next question comes in. What are we doing to help this become a better world? Now, Nehemiah is pointing to the past. He says, guys, don't you remember how we turned from God and we ignored God and we blasphemed God and we have allowed sin to come into our, we have intermarried, we have gotten into the situation where uh, the, the heathens were marrying uh, some of the Jewish people and all this was happening. And Nehemiah is saying, we don't want that to happen again because you know what God did in the past, right? That's what he's saying. And so he wanted a better world. He didn't want the history to be repeated. Do you know why history repeats itself? Because we're too dumb to learn from our mistakes. Did I say that? Isn't that the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different results? Does it happen? Well, let me give you some truth check 
basically looking at our own lives, truth check on God's purpose for you. Just a couple things. This is truth about God's purpose for you. The first one, God knows you better than you do. God knows what you can become before you know what you can become. God knows your ability to accomplish great things well before you do. I mean, look at the pages of history in the Bible and begin to realize how God chose individuals <laughs> who felt they couldn't accomplish it. Well, people, listen to me. God knows your ability, and better yet, God knows His ability in you if you will let Him use you. So God knows you better than you do. Secondly, what we realize is that God has created you for a time like this. Justin brought the message just a few uh, Sundays ago, and it's dealing with this fact of how God has created you for a time like this. This is the time people listen to me. Every one of us can acknowledge this. We are living in the midst of evil, and so God has created you for a time like this, not to be a part of the evil, but to do the good that you ought to be doing. God has created you for a time like this. And realizing that if God has created me to be in this midst of the time and, and, and that I am to be fulfilling the time that God has given me and God has placed me in by serving Him. The work never ends. Doing nothing, number three, doing nothing is not a part of God's plan. Read the scriptures. From the very beginning, God told Adam and Eve to do something. He didn't say, Adam... I've made it all for you. Just go out there and sit under the shade tree and just have a good old time. Adam, don't worry about it. That's going to fall from the tree and you can just eat that. From the very beginning, God's plan has been for us to do something. To do nothing is to give in to the evil. If Nehemiah would have come into town and he saw this evil that's going on and he didn't do anything about it, he is, all, he is in that process of saying it's okay to be like that. It's not okay. Doing nothing is not a part of God's plan. God is wanting individuals to get involved and to stand up and to do what he would have us do. Well, I, I might lose some friends. Well, then we need to lose some friends. You lose, you lose a friend out there, then they really wasn't much of a friend to start with. Number four, you need to realize that God has chosen you. God chose me. God chose you. God chooses people, not on the basis of their goodness, but on the basis of His goodness. He chooses us. And what we need to do is realize that God has a purpose for us. This is a truth check. God has a purpose for people. If God didn't have a purpose for you, why were you born? You see, God has a purpose for individuals. And the last one in the area of the truth check on God's purpose for you comes to the point that it's your choice. It's your choice. It's not somebody else's choice what you're going to do. That's, that's manipulation. It's your choice. You have the free will. Nehemiah comes in. He starts doing the right thing. He, he, he speaks out against the evil. He commands individuals. But listen, he can command all he wants to. If the people chose, they didn't have to listen to Nehemiah. But thank God they did. And they cleansed the temple. And they began to turn uh, from this evil that they had committed. As believers in Jesus Christ, we are to find ways to make things better. And if we're not willing to do something to make things better, let me say it like it's been said for many times. If we're not willing to do something to make things better, then we need to stop complaining. If you're not doing anything, you're part of the problem. It just might be that God 
has created you to take on the task, plural, that need to be done. God's church will not be defeated by the devil. Amen to that. God's church will not be defeated by the devil. And how great it is to be a part of his church. Now there's two questions I want to give you in closing. The first one, very simple. Are you a part of his church? That's the first one. Are you a part of His church? The second one is, are you finishing the task God has for you? What does it mean to finish God's task? It means to live every day in a way that your life pleases God. God has given you life. And we need to find ways, some mean, to where we, we somehow, we just uh, become that light that God is wanting us to be. You see, it never ends. From day after day after day, the job of the Christian is ongoing. God puts people in our lives for a purpose. And some people need to, need to see how you're getting through in life. And some people need to turn to Jesus Christ. Are you a part of His church? Are you finishing the task that God has for you? Let's pray. Father, we pray that right now today, that in the closing of this message, that we would take it to heart and realize we're either a part of Your church or we're not. We've either accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior or we're working against Jesus Christ. Father, help us to find ways, things to do that would make this, this place where we live, where we go to church, a better place. It only happens when we're grieved by the evil going on around us and when we speak out against it but we speak out because God has called us to be different. Move us in the next moments to respond according to how you're dealing with our hearts. In the name of Christ, I pray. Amen.